an electrical shock when it doesn't fit in the grammatical way. Right. And, um, uh, and that's actually more my obstacle, is that my brain just doesn't well, go there. But right. I get it, and I really, yeah. I want to be, but I, I want to keep that. That's like, and I yeah, think we're, that we're I the worst. The State of the Union. I didn't pick it up when he said illegal. I actually did, but not, not terribly. Um, I mean, I found myself going, huh, I wouldn't. Well, it's, that's why we have to, you know, we have to monitor ourselves and we have to apologize when we, yeah, no better, do better. That's absolutely. I'm, I am awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, you, you live, you live. Okay, welcome. We're, we're here. We're, uh, we are, today's topic is um, the one block wonder. I did give uh, Confidence Stitch the um, uh, deal, the outline. There's not a lot of information I wanted to put on here for one one reason it's there's a ton on the on the internet for any of these techniques and um and i've written down a few things at the bottom for resources um but also because it's a sinkhole of attention the one block wonder is like this magic wand that gets <laughs> spun and i could take pictures of fabric all day long and run it through the One Block Wonder app. And if you don't know what that is, I, I, we will go through that. Um, so first of all, what is it? And there are a couple. I have never made the, um, and, there, and One Block Wonder is not the only way to do kaleidoscope technique or any kind of stack and cut, stack and whack um, kind of technique, but it is probably the one that's gained the most fortitude and and um, popularity to support quilters and and uh, give all kinds of cool ideas. Um, the basic concept is that you are taking a fabric and finding the repeat of the print. And if you didn't know that, here we go. So the way I do it is to take the selvage edge, the selvage, you don't have to say edge when you say selvage, um, and start here and go, okay, where do I have that same design? Two roses, here's one rose, here's two roses. Oh, but it's at a different angle. So that's not the repeat, but here it is. So if I am starting at the edge of my cut, my cut edge um, with these two roses, then a, one repeat goes to the exact same spot that this is. So um, it's a little tricky to get that. Let's see. So I'll hold it here. So from this leaf that it precedes the two roses, this leaf is cut off. This long, reachy one is cut off. So that would be one repeat. And then, boom, here's the two roses that aren't in alignment, here's the two roses side by side and the Ricci. So there's two repeats, and then you keep going along your selvage. So if you are cutting a design that is four, so maybe it's half square triangles or something like that, I'm gonna show you some examples, then you're gonna cut four repeats and actually cut them and then stack them. And then you're going to align the exact spot in the design. Ooh, whoa, whoa, almost came over. Sorry, guys. Oh. On my part. And 
you're going to cut. Um, I don't have an example to cut for you, but I'll show you. So you're going to cut um, on, a, on a surface where you can spread out and where you can get the full length. You can straighten your fabric um, as we would to get a nice square cut. So we have a nice flat fold at the bottom. And you can do it this way. And where you lay it down, so I have, I just flip to the other end, I guess, so it's not the same that I just did. So that's the other thing, is know you're cutting from the same end every time, because wherever your cut is on yardage, you may not have um, all of that. Uh, it won't, it will probably won't be the same. So we have our nice, flat square fold and then we would want to trim and square up here so let's see make sure underneath yeah remember how the fabric sometimes twists a little bit and you get um i had a rotary cutter somewhere there it is careful don't <coughs> So I'm going to do my square cut right there, get rid of that. And now what I'm noticing is I have these two side-by-side -side roses. Here's these two angled roses. Here's the single rose. And here again are the two side-by-sides. So I can see that this leaf right here, I don't know if everybody can see this, but this leaf is the same one. It's the leaf between the two roses right on top. And it's right at the tip. So if I were cutting this, I would line up here. Then I would make sure I'm getting a nice straight cut. Line up again. Ooh, that shifted me. So now I got to move over. So I'm going to go right to the edge. So it's a lot of fiddling. And, um, and then I would cut, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So I would cut here. Now, when we open it up, we will see how straight the print is on the actual fabric. So here's these two roses side by side. This is, this does not have that nope that repeat doesn't go in that direction it goes in a diagonal so um, so this width has no repeats no oh it does yep I'm seeing it so here's these two in that direction here's way down here here's these two in that direction so the repeat from the selvage edge comes up to here. Is anyone seeing that that's not right? I think that's right. So right here is it's it's actually like one and a half repeats in this direction. Um, but you're not going to be concerned with that. So then what we'll do is we'll move over. And we'll take this, and we should have a nice straight cut because we just did it. And we'll find our two roses, repeat that leaf, and come right here, and then find a nice straight fold cut. And I'm just a hair, wiggle around, and there we go. Now we want to check and see that both edges of our selvage are at least the same. Yep, they're pretty good. So they may not align perfectly. You may end up, so these 
two roses at an angle are right here. This is my selvage that matches that side of the fabric. I don't want to accidentally get it flipped this way because that won't match up at all. I won't be able to find anything that matches. So you always want to make sure you, if the selvage isn't different in the fabric, sometimes they look the same. So you're going to want to put a piece of tape or a pin or something on one side so that you're getting it lined up. Okay, after <clears throat> I've decided on what block I'm going to make, um, so I might want a block that goes with only four. And that would be, there's lots of patterns. Um, the book Stack and Whack made it really big in, I don't know, the 2000s or something. Um, and um, that was a fun one. So this pattern, this fabric has already been done what I just did. Things were lined up and we had a stack like this. I took my half square triangle ruler and cut that out either with a template or with a ruler, which I'll demonstrate in a sec. And now, why do you wanna do this design? Because every time you repeat that design, you get a kaleidoscope pinwheely sort of thing going on. So, when you put these pieces into the center, you're not necessarily matching. So we're not necessarily trying to match that seam with anything. But after you sew quarter inch seams, each piece, each little flower petal here ha is right on the cut edge. And so that should sew up in a way that keeps it rotating. And if you just kind of squint at that, you can see the image of how it comes out in, in the repeat. So the way these got cut were, um, it, the way is a was, was to um, take four repeats of this of that fabric, obviously not this fabric, and line them up and press them. This is kind of wrinkly, so I'm not, I'm not gonna go ahead with this, but, and line them up here and actually get like a spot in your um, design. And if you've watched these videos, and for those of you who've been here before, you know I don't like to pin. And the reason, I know, is that like not good or what? So when you pin, you do not want to stick it in and go like this because now you've bent the layers underneath. And so they may not line up right. So what you do is you stick your pins in straight. If you use a wool um, pressing uh, pad, it's really nice to do this on top of that. And you find one spot. So I'm going right into this dark spot that's between two petals of the rose and the dark area on the leaf. And I can find that exact spot and go there. And then I'm going to stick that down. If you don't have a pressing cloth, you can use a styrofoam piece of styrofoam board kind of thing that you cut. Um, you can just leave it right like that. And that's fine too if you don't have any um, thick, dense stuff that you can poke into. But so now you have it that way. Then, see these aren't all lined up and you will find that as you take another pin, and go down, and let's say I'm gonna go at the tip of this bright leaf, then, oh, that came in a totally different spot. So you have to, you have to move, and you have to get it, and I push those pins in so the heads hold it all together. And I think 
in the One Block Wonder book and videos, they recommend that. And after you've gotten a number of, you just pick a spot. It's not like there's a magic place to do it. So I'm going to go right here. You lift. Nope, that didn't line up. And you do this. It does line up. So when I say, oh, that didn't line up, don't, don't worry that you know there's something wrong. It's just that the fabric has fluffed in a weird way. And then you take your pins, after you do that over the whole piece, then you take your pins and you use the heads to keep it all together. And you set it down and kind of have them go sideways. But this is, the, this is the advantage of sticking it into a, a wool pad or a, a styrofoam is that you don't have to do that sideways thing. And even that little bit of sideways, it pulls it off just a hair. So the better you can line that up, the better it'll be for cutting. Nowadays, and I've used the glue stick in this class before, you can also use, oh, yep, I have it. Nope, that's not it. Looks similar. I think I have it at home because I was using it. You can use a glue stick and you can, um, you know, carefully peel back and, and stick right near where your pin is, and then that'll hold it for a while you cut. Um, anywhere you use glue, eventually it can gunk up your needle or your cutting blades, but um, probably not enough to worry about because um, we're just doing a dab uh, across the different layers. So if I'm doing a hexi, I'm going to have six repeats, a hexagon. If I'm going to do something like the example I just laid out and it's a triangle, a half square triangle shape, then it's going to be four. So it depends on the, the design you've chosen. Um, the stack and whack reference is a good one for uh, non-hexy. This one, um, wonderful one fabric quilts. It's really cool because um, it's an old book. Because what they've done is they've just taken one fabric And I'm gonna cover that fabric. Oh, okay. So this one, this stripe, and usually they're striped, the striped pattern, and then they cut their blocks from that pattern. Another way that you can line up like you've done here, like I did here, is to not cut them in sections, but to take the ruler and you might be using a square ruler, and you actually set the clear ruler over the design. You draw that on, and then when you go to cut another piece, you line up your drawing. So using a permanent marker, you can get it off with alcohol afterwards, rubbing alcohol. <laughs> or, or wine, probably. I don't know, maybe. I don't know. And what just happened right now, I have this pin in, and I just happened to smooth it, and out came the pin. So the pins, the, the, until you get it pinned, and pre prepped and pinned, um, it's a little hazardous and it can be a little frustrating, but once you get that glued, you're, you're good. Um, so you get all your layers along, if you're going to do four, if you're going to do six, if you're going to do whatever. The one block wonder design that uses a panel, and I'll show you some pictures of that, uh, that is done with six full panels. So you, it can get expensive. So you're purchasing six complete panels, you're lining them up, and if anyone's worked with panels, you know that they aren't always printed in a terribly square and even way, and so sometimes that's quite tricky. So you, you want to pin and line up and maybe glue um, afterwards uh, a lot. When then, go ahead. Is, is your mic? Oh, no, it is. I'm oh, sorry, okay. it popped off. No, that's okay. <laughs> Whoa, well, somebody wasn't, something wasn't working, right? Huh? Sorry. Somebody. 
somebody chatted and said, I can't hear you. No, you can't. I'm so sorry. Okay, there we go. We got it. Can you hear me now? Um, so this is a fabric I had, and I was getting ready to, to do it, and it, and I just lost focus or had more priorities um, rise above. We got it. Yep, we're ready. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So, um, so I've already cut the repeat. Again, I'm going to take my pins and I'm going to line up and I'm going to go like right here, wherever you can find an actual spot. So I wouldn't say go in this purple area right here in the middle because I can't be sure I'm pinning straight down to the same purple area. Well, I can pin to the same area, but I may not be lining up. So you want to pin where you have an actual spot in the print. So I'm going to go to this branch of coral or whatever it is right into that flower. I'm going to go again through this next layer, through this next layer, and this layer. and so forth and so forth on down to all i think that was six layers now you can see by lining up just one pin they weren't laid down nice and straight so i hold the pin in the point edge and i shake it shake it and get it to where it's going to stay and you can see here that my cut wasn't you know super well probably is better than it looks right there but it's not it's not um perfect but you don't need to worry about that because you're going to trim it up later after you get it all set uh, another pin so now i'll kind of come over here let's say i go to the top of this got those fabrics all here so this end here I haven't pinned yet, so I don't need to worry about them lining up. So I'm going to go to the top of this yellow coral or whatever weird color that is. Am I in the right one? Yep. Yep. Um, you go through. You get to here. You go through. You get to here. Go through. Uh, make sure you're only getting one layer. That's tricky too. Right there. And right there. Okay, now I'm push that pin all the way through. And where did my other pin go? Oh, I hope I didn't lose it. I did. Huh, you can see this is a little <laughs> tricky. And yeah. There, you know, when you read and look up some things about all this, you will find some tips that are, there's that other pin. Now I have them, and I've got two spots here that are all set up. And for now, we'll, oop, I just, I, oh, that was it, and I lost my bottom piece. So you can see it's, it's a little tricky, and I probably am not the most gifted in it, and people who do it all the time. But I've got those two pieces, and I'm trying to hold these pins straight up. So I'm going to do this. Here, where are we? Now I'm in a weird different place, right by the pink, right by the pink. Okay, I see where that is right here hmm. and a pin under the thumbnail is no fun okay that's good i'm gonna tell you like it is here okay and then this goes right here boom okay so now i've got these so i'm going to keep doing that 
in kind of a zigzag, maybe up here and maybe back here. And just, you don't have to do a whole lot of them, but you do have to get enough that you're anchoring your fabric down. And, um, and then you kind of hold all the pins and shuffle it down. And then you can flip it over carefully, of course and maybe check a few other spots to make sure that they also are lined up. And it'll take, probably on this whole slab, it'll probably be 12 pins, I bet, something like that. So you'll have about 12 spaces that you're gonna kinda aim for and keep in alignment. Once you have all those in alignment, um, then you will lay it down in a single layer. And if you're going to do the one, I'm, let's say I've pinned all this. And if you're going to do um, the one block wonder, you're going to be doing hexes. And so what you'll be doing is, what you'll be cutting is um, 30 degree triangles. And so you need to decide how big you're gonna do it. And then you will cut one strip, whatever size that is. The examples I'll show you in a sec are um, three and three quarters. And so, uh, but I, they're also really fun to do in bigger or smaller, smaller is, uh, is more, more work, of course. Um, but so you're gonna cut that strip of um, whatever height you want for your triangle. Then you're gonna set those strips and pin them. And you have to, when you're cutting, you have to be aware, of course, where your pins are. And you might have to slide a pin out while you set your ruler down on it. So it is a little, it, you know, it's definitely a process. And, um, but once you get it, I've made a bunch of these and they're really, really fun. So if you, this is one of my first ones. And so this is, hold it that way. Isn't it fun? And um, this is one way of organizing the hexes. There are lots of ways that you can do it. Um, I like this. It's really fast to assemble, actually. And here's another one. I love chickadees. And, um, and then here's a really sweet little thing. You can do a pot holder. My daughter loves small pot holders. And she said, she asked me if, you know, that's the perfect size for a pot holder for me. And could you make me a couple? So I made her three or four of them, I think. And um, she uses them. And all I've done to secure it in quilting, and she said, oh, mom, I'm so embarrassed you're taking this. I haven't even washed that pot holder. And I don't know how long. So anyway, pardon. I'll try and keep this side. And if you're noticing anything, eh, sorry. Um, <laughs> So what I did was just around the very center design is I just stitched in whatever direction that design was. This is pretty, well, it's not, it, and I did use the pieces that weren't perfectly aligned. So this might have been kind of a circle-ish. Um, and, that, and then that's all on these smaller pot holders. And then I sew around the outside edge with them sewn pillowcase style. So just front to back and all the way around the edge with a turn inside so out. Quilting, just in the center. Yeah, just in the center. So take a look. Pardon the, the grime from kitchen. Um, the other thing to be aware of is you are working with all, almost all, bias edges. One edge of every triangle is on the, on the grain. Um, all the others are not. And so this is where my comments I've made before about sewing with bias is about either fearing it and going, oh no, nothing fits, or looking at it and going, you know, I can tug that a little and it'll stretch and fit. 
or I can ease it a little and it will kind of flatten out and fall into place. When I had this top done, I probably should have brought it in to show you, but um, it was uh, very not flat. <laughs> And not very square, and if you look carefully, you might be able to still see some evidence of that. Quilting hides a multitude of sins, and this is quilted in a, um, a stippling design, which allows you to kind of quilt over those spots because it's bias edges, and they will pack down, or they will stretch a little, and they'll fall into place. So um, I... I don't worry about that. that I, pleats. Yeah, pleats work. <laughs> pleats work. Now this, I don't have any more of this chickadee fabric, so I can't show you, but um, it was like this big open murally thing of a brown background with pine trees and chickadees in it. And by cutting, just like I modeled on that piece, uh, on that um, kind of bright colored one, just getting the triangles and wherever those triangles fell sometimes i got full chickadees sometimes i didn't get any chickadees and but you will have stacked on top of each other four or six however many you're using um layers and maybe eight because if you're going to do a diamond star you might want uh that's another book i brought called elegant easy and elegant stars and this is done this effect wow. is done by stacking the diamonds so the same part of the print on the fabric is cut in exactly the same spot of each diamond and there are a number of quilts in this uh, that give i mean depending on what your fabric has you might get quite a lot of lines and directional um, concepts. This one, if you look closely, if you can look closely, I'll pass this around to you guys. Um, there, are, uh, it, it, there aren't loops and, and um, scallops on the print necessarily, but it's just cut in a way that gets a curve of a contrasted area. So the contrast in the design is what gives that that image. Um, here's a fun one. And then how to use that same fabric in borders and other aspects of the quilt, the corners. Uh, in smaller versions, these are all smaller eight-point stars at the top and bottom here. So those, so this, this is a fun book um, if you like that kind of stack and whack thing. Um, the other thing, we have a quilt right here in our room that's a K-facet stripe, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and the, that has been cut so that the stripe looks like strips of fabric, but it's not. And so that can be cut in a way where the exact same triangle is mixing in fours and you get a complete box um, diagonal box uh, to connect with each piece. And so you can see here the, um, this triangle, while it matches kind of in here, it really doesn't. You have a tan lining up with a green and a yellow lining up with a turquoise. And when you get to the outer section, oh, that's even another piece of fabric. Um, so if it were the same piece of fabric, maybe, it may not line up quite the same in some areas if you're not trying to do that. But if you line up your repeat and you cut your triangles on, in that repetition, you will get them so they do actually um, connect in the exact same uh, design. So it's all about how you do that. And this is an example of that. So, I need to pull off, okay. Um, so this one is, this fabric. 
So this fabric is a, not this feather, um, is, is a stripe here. It's a real old one. If any of you watching know it, you know this one's really been around a long time. And I had it for so long, I just went, I, I need to give it away or use it. And I had just learned about these strip piecing um, uh, blocks. And this design is sometimes called lover's knot because when you cut them, I think I've, I've, I've even demonstrated this in, a in a, one of our sessions with strip piecing. If you use a striped fabric, you're basically using strips, but you have to line them up. So in lining them up, they end up making this L opposite each other and then the knot when it's on that same strand of, of the fabrics. So, um, so there's that. So there's a lot of a lot of different things that you can do by lining up your fabric and matching the pattern. Imagine this fun feather to be a kaleidoscope. I mean, it, and so one of the, so let me show you, uh, no, sorry, uh, let me show you this book, Caliente Quilts is an old book too, and it's very fun. It has a lot of use of strips not matching, but you can, I just wanted to show how that ends up having, just by using stripes and connecting them, you get that same kaleidoscope. So there's a lot of ways to get that kaleidoscope effect without quite as much work as all this. So if you, keep, I keep stumbling, I don't know what my problem is today. Um, so let's take, on the resources, I've given you the One Block Wonder Design Helper app. And um, if you have any uh, hesitation about, no, I don't want to load, download an app, um, it, it, I've never had any problem with it. But you also can just go to the, the One Block Wonder Design Helper and use it, and it's not permanently on your phone or computer or whatever. And when you get to their page, you get this image. So this is a sample of fabric. So it's a piece of fabric, a design. And then what they are, the, what it says here is choose local image up here in this, go, right here in this little box. Is that getting on the camera okay with the glare? Not really. Um, decently. I might hold it up to the Okay. The All right. So you're talking about that gray box at the top right? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay. And I just put the link to this in the Okay, chat. perfect. So anybody can do that. So you click on choose local image and then you get a screen that says camera camcorder files. So if you have a photo of some fabric that you took somewhere and you didn't have access to this, you can pull that up. If you don't and you're right here in the store, you click camera. And so right now, my, my uh, tablet has a, a back on it, so when it's closed, I can't use the camera. Um, or open, when the tablet's open. So I'm not giving you a clear image here. So right now my camera is working. I'm scanning behind me here. And I can go to this fabric and set my camera as best as possible without any edges of the background showing. Because when you say, make this a hexi, those edges will be perceived as the fabric. So you'll get some funky black or purple or whatever's behind your, your uh, fabric. So I'm going to click on that. And then you can say done. Yes, the check mark at the bottom is a yes, it's done. And I must have moved. It's kind of fuzzy, but that's okay. So here's it, here it is. 
Then you scroll down and it says width of image. So this image is maybe 18 inches. So I'm going to say 18, 18, whoops, boom, 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 18. And triangle edge size is what I want to cut from it. So I'm going to leave it at five. I may have, I don't have anything in mind right now. Left offset pixels, top offset pixels, it means where you want to cut it off. And then you push make hexes. And then what you get is a, a picture of your fabric with the hexes marked as you would cut. So, you, so this is the step would be after you've cut the repeat of the fabric six times, stacked them, pinned them, gotten them all lined up, then you would cut a row off and make your triangles. Flip, flop, flip, flop, okay? I'll demonstrate that in a sec. And um, so it shows you those lines of those triangles. Then you go down and guess what you see? You see these cool hexes that come out of it. And I'm telling you, you can do this for hours. I, I have taken, I think, pictures of almost all my fabric, you know? And it, yes, and so while their lines of their triangles may not perfectly align with what you're going to actually cut on yours, it does give you the sense of how the black background incorporates. It does give you sometimes you're cutting, where was that one? Sometimes you're cutting truly right where the feather is, this yellow one here. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and sometimes, here I'll blow it up, there we go. Sometimes you're getting that true feather. And then sometimes, you're getting right off. Oh, I don't know why that did that. Uh, I think, I don't know. Anyway, sometimes you're getting just little snips of feathers, and so your background is most of your hexy. And so, um, so when you do that, you get the possibilities, and um, and it it tries to incorporate then all of the triangles that the, the program just outlined on the fabric. So, um, so you take your picture of your fabric. Now, I brought some fun ones in from uh, Confident Stitch. This was on their sale rack. And so, and what I do is I set it on top of the I set it on top of the, the rows of fabric bolts. So now I go back to my image and I choose local image camera. And now I'm ready to do another one. And I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna come in so I have no background. Oop, I have background there. There we go. And check. Yes. So now I have my fabric. I scroll up and I fit, fill in. This is actually 22 inches. Whoops. Keep doing that wrong. 22 inches the width of the image. And I'm just going to leave everything else the way it is. And then uh, go, yeah, the little arrow that says go. And then one block wonder. Nope, sorry, ah, I got goofed up. All right, let's try this again, sorry. Camera. So we're gonna come here. And right here, you can see that there's a light and a dark in the shadow of the light from above. If, if when you take your picture, make sure you come down completely or that light and dark will also show up in your hexes. So, um, 
So there's there's a little there's a little bit of trick to it, not a whole lot, but okay, got a good picture. Say yes, check. And then go back, go up here. 22, yes. Okay, and then I go to here. Why isn't it? Oh. Okay, make hexes. Sorry, I can't read. All right, now I have the cutout, and then I have the hexes. So the hexes from that fabric have a lot more uniform color because there's only basically three colors. There's the background turquoise, the red flowers, and the cream green mix. And so mostly what we're, that's the image we're going to get with some variation of, of the spots of Very those colors. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fun? Yeah. And um, so let's take a, oh, 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 I wanted to try this. I can't wait to see what happens with this. <laughs> this is, oh, 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 <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay, this is one of Confidence Stitch's newer fabrics that came in, and they're the, who's the guy? Ha ha um, Charlie, Harper. Charlie Harper, thank you. And Charlie Harper um, images of birds are on uh, so many cool fabrics right now. Oh, they're so fun. This is the coolest design. I love it because it's a skier who is somehow inter faced with Charlie Harper's bird and so it kind of looks like ski poles and I guess those are ski poles. Anyway, somehow all that went together. I don't know if that was his design or if it was a mix of two designs or what, but I'm not, I'm not uh, knowledgeable. I'm familiar with his work and love it, but I don't, uh, I don't know it really well. So we'll go back to our deal and go back here, come, oh, shoot, now I did it wrong. Okay, choose local image, camera. So once you got all that, you're good to go. And come out here to get, oh, what happened? Sorry, okay. Um. <laughs> okay, I want to get straight on here. Okay, so now I have this photo. I do a check, check, yes. Now I go down, we have 20. And everything else I'm going to keep the same, make hexes. And then it has the image of how those hexes are cut. I can't wait. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is too fun. Whoa. So I know, I know. And so where you have a lot of negative space in a print, those little pieces of design end up really creating the um, hexy pattern. And so, um, yeah, look at that one at the bottom here. Whoops, where'd it go? There it is. Can you see that one? Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just really fun. I, honestly, seeing that, I don't think I'd use that for the for a hexy um, one block wonder. Um, however, this, I want to show you, this is a panel, and this is what happens with a panel. So again, think about you're doing, I have to unfold quite a bit here because I want the whole panel to, well, if I don't do the whole panel, I don't do the whole panel. You'll, you'll get the idea. So, and 
<laughs> oh, uh, when I came in, when I first learned about all this, oh my gosh, I'm like, se- yeah, <laughs> I'm setting, you know, this this kind of layout. I'm setting it up on the tops of the fabric bolts and snapping pictures and oh my gosh, look at this one. <laughs> so um, so here we are. Boop boop boop. Okay, go back. Oh no, that's it. Go back. <laughs> I mentioned other people online, but you can also download the photos off of our website. Like oh, it, yes, and, and it will really it nice. will let you do that. Yes, the one thing that I noticed because I've done that from a couple website is that I think it might be done intentionally, but um, a lot of uh, sources of fabric, when you see the actual picture of the fabric, it's fluffed a bit, and so you have these wrinkles of shadow and light. Mm -hmm. And so that actually will, if that's in the picture, it will become a, a minor, uh, variation in the actual look of the hexes, but you'll still get the basic idea, even if that happens, unless it's one of those where they're spun, and then you won't. <laughs> so, that, so when you put photos of the new arrival of the fabric, yes, that. Yeah. yes, uh, no, exactly. Right, right. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to take that picture. I'll show you what I ended up. It's just half of the panel. So it's, well, it's flipping left and right here. Okay, we're done. We got it. I got it. I didn't, I got a blurry one. Okay. 20. Go, go, go. Make hexies. Okay. So now... I've got the hexes are done that way. And look at this. Oh, I know. Oh. So then look and see what you've got. So the panel concept is, has really hit a lot of people with a passion. And like I said, it can get expensive. You're purchasing six panels in order to do this. And actually, you might be purchasing seven or eight because if you want to do a large quilt and you have all these hexes from the six panels then you have one or two left over panels left over that you use for borders but if you look up one block wonder on pinterest or just online search you will find a huge selection of possibilities of how They've been used to even fill in, keeping the panel in its hole, and and then the hexes fill in one section of it or something. You know, it's just it, the artistic aspect of it is too much fun. So, um, so I, I'm I'm having trouble even stopping because <laughs> I I love doing that. It's just so much fun to see and go. God, no kidding. That's how that turns out. But, um, oh, I do want to do this. I do want to do this one because I want you to see what happens when you have a pretty homogenous design. So the colors here blend together a lot more. And um, let me do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just go through the whole store and do a hexy search. Okay. Oh, here. Does it give you directions or just photos of the book? You, when you go on Pinterest, you just search whatever you're looking for, and it just gives you, it gives you however someone posted it. Mostly okay. it's a picture of, but sometimes it's a link to instructions. Right. Sometimes it's a, a link to a blog that somebody has, and that picture is one of many things that they've put on their files. You can actually search my name, Suzanne Starrett, and you'll see all the files I've saved, which oh. is too much for a lifetime to revisit. But um, anyway, so I'm going to grab my tablet and we'll take a picture again. 
keep getting this lovely person. Okay, so choose local image, camera, and I'm gonna take that picture. Now, I, I just realized I didn't get down low enough, but I can't hold it very still when I do that. And so, um, it's kind of blurry. But, twenty. okay. All right, make hexes. So now I have hexes are cut shows how that was done and look at how much more distinct than the design and color flow is because when you look at that there's very distinct right. patterns for sure but it 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 just becomes something different so there we go um so to, welcome to the joy of chaos <laughs> um I, I brought a few fabrics just to open minds to how these work. Um, again, you don't have to do the hexes. You can do like the four half square triangles. But, oops, sorry, that's my, we don't have much time alarm. All right. Um, I feel like romper room when that goes off. It's like... Oh, boys and girls, guess what we have? <laughs> so this is a fa an old fabric that I love. Um, and it, as a hexi, would, you can just kind of, nice. from what we just did, you can kind of get an idea that it would be quite fun. Um, here's a floral, uh, natural-ish design. And the fun thing on hexes with a fabric like this is you have these brown branches and those will come into those triangles or pieces that you're using and have a very specific spin on the, the kaleidoscope effect. Oh, that one's the wrong way. Um, this one does not do well. It's a little tiny, kind of soft. Um, print so just to let you know doesn't give you a whole lot um, this one is fantastic I've looked at this this is a cave yeah yeah this is a cave the feathers and that this comes in a variety of colors or did I don't know if it still does here's one that gets way fun uh, is a big tropical bright color print mm -hmm. and so you have these two cans they end up getting cut up so you you end up with an eye maybe in it you know a beak point the flowers you have all kinds of things you have a lot of background too so you'll have a lot of that turquoise just mostly being part of any one of the hexes but then you'll have other hexes that are mostly green um, so it, it's uh, quite a fun play. And then this design, it, it almost has a little bit of that already going on. So I haven't taken a picture of this, but the fun, I think one of the really sweet things about doing these is the, these um, hexy ones, the one block wonder, is that you do have the app to take a picture before you cut seven repeats of, or six repeats of your fabric. And, um, and end up with something you're not happy with. So you, you do get that. And um, uh, oh, and, and this one, this is a really sweet one. This would be, I think, would be really pretty in, in the hexes. I obviously don't have enough of it to do that, <laughs> but there it is. However, even when you have a little piece like this, if you look at your repeat, I have one two, three, four. So I could do something where I cut a, one block if, if it was part of a larger piece or a, tape or a pot holder. Um, I could very well 
stack those. I could cut the fabric in a way that lines those four on top of each other. Or I could draw on my ruler or template where that fe feather is or where that design is. And then um, get the same layout in each cut. Um, and if you're cutting like one block, one piece this way and that way, you might very well have a, a couple blocks that you can get from a size this this small. So it's it it isn't just the seven million yards that you have to buy, but it's also um, the concept of looking at prints on fabrics differently. Um, so now let me just demonstrate the actual cutting. So this is the last swath. No, this is, sorry. This is the last swath that I had um, left over. I had long pieces. Um, and I have them pinned in the wrong way. So now I have to go down and double check. And they're, remember, they're not folded in half. You don't have wrong sides together or right sides together. You have all one single layer of fabric and lined up. So I have this little pin. Oh, gosh, they're pretty good. So far, so good. One, two, three. Oop, that went off a little. Four. And again, you're looking for an exact spot on the print that you're getting your pin in. That went off a lot. Okay. Five, six, seven, and eight. So I'm flipping down here with my pin point, pulling that. And then I'm going to want to do the same thing. And this size, about three pins would be great. So I'm going to go here, 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 three, four. Oh, great. Four. Not quite. Five. Six. Good. seven, and eight. So there's that one. And then we'll come down here, and we'll go here, this. This is where my vision is getting old, and I have to go be careful to be looking right where I want it to. I was commenting with some folks in a, another class about how sewing is like the worst COVID friendly teaching thing because you, you lick your fingers, you, <laughs> <laughs> you have all this spit involved. Um. <laughs> okay, so I'm pulling on these pins. This is a nice small example to use. And then um, I'm going to put them over here. And I'm going to go ahead. I've got to turn them so I can do what I need to do. And you want to be sure you're using good straight pins. That's another little tip. Um, I have a tendency to be hard on my equipment, and my pins aren't necessarily all that straight. That pin just fell out, but I'm putting pressure on the spot where it came out. Here's this, and I'm going to put pressure there and there. And once I have it all set, then I'm going to take my ruler. And if you look at your ruler, I'll put this behind my, co my coat behind it. I have a 45 45, they come together where the mark is. I have a 60 and a 60, and a 30 and a 30. So for cutting, you're not measuring the inside angle of a triangle, you're measuring the outside angle where the edge of the fabric is and one line. So you use the 60 degree line. 
60 degree line. So I have, I'm going to put my 60 degree line on my edge of the fabric, slide it down to where nothing is too short. So here's my 60 degree line on the edge of the fabric and I have my rotary cutter and I cut through sharp blades only because you're cutting through six layers, all right? Then I flip it around and I use my 60 degree line without a, ah, okay, here's, here's a little weird thing. So rulers have you don't want to be pulling and tugging much. You want to be super gentle and easy. So rulers have a, a way that these number, these lines come into the corner and they aren't at the corner always. Um, and so, um, you, so you do have to think about how your line goes the whole way and I always have to rethink this. Okay, so I'm gonna take my 60 degree line and this little bit here isn't enough to cut. I still have that much more. So if I wanna be precise, I can flip my ruler over making sure I'm using the right line. And because I have my fabric lined up on my grid, nice and straight. I can go to the next grid line and then get right to that point. I hope that makes sense. And now I have these. So here's one. And what you would do is you'd go through that long strip and you'd click, 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 click all the way through, keep your stacks together, maybe pin them together, maybe put them in baggies, whatever. And, um, and then you have this and you have this. And I obviously had eight in here. I could have done, <laughs> I, th I thought I was counting. Oh, that's funny. Oh, well, it's what you, when you have your mind on a million things. So there's that. Now, guess what? I might go this way. And that's what happens. Oh, that's what happens on the Hexi uh, app. If you tap a block, it turns, it turns them to show you what happens if it goes the other way. So now I'm putting this little pink flower all toward the center. Pink flower toward the center. And now I have this kind of wreath in the middle. And if we do this white pink flower in here. So it's up to me to say which way I like best. And then that's, that's the way I'm going to do it. So when they're sewn together, you, you sew sets of three. So you sew here and here, here and here, and you have a row of them. And then if you're going to do the design that I did on the table runners, you decide on a background color and you cut triangles from that. And they go in here, and then the next taxi starts. And so you can see, this one is, I think, the easiest to see. So here's my middle of these hexes. I have these three, these three, these three, these three, all sewn together, and they're across that way. Then I set my background in between. And then I sew the background to those three. I sew that to these three. I sew all of that to this background, all of that to this, and you just start working your way across in a row. And then you have one single line right. to sew together. Um, and then same if you're gonna do um, multiple level, layers. 
Now, on a table runner, I didn't want it any bigger than this. I've made them, though, where they're bigger or where they're, well, this one is. This, the triangles themselves are smaller than this, I believe. And, um, uh, and so I actually have one row, another row, and another row of full hexes. So there's six rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, that are assembled. But you assemble them in that row fashion. And so they go together pretty slick. And um, on, on the assembly of the hexes fitting together and not having background, they're assembled like hexes. So you just, you just fit them into each other. And um, so that's kind of how it goes. I think, are there any questions online? Are there any comments, ideas? This is, it, it's such a fun, um, creative, and kind of magical sort of process. I, and I really like that the table runners are one of the easiest things to do. So you can really play with this with a smaller piece of fabric. You can really play with this with, um, an outcome that doesn't take you forever. Uh, I have a group of women friends that are, uh, you know, we, we kind of identify with chickadees. And um, having cut enough for probably a lap size quilt, I made all five of us table runners. So, you know, that was, it was really easy to whip those out and have them done. So, um, Anybody online have questions, comments? Okay. Well, I think that wraps me up. I don't, I don't think I have anything else to share. And I forget, do you remember what our topic next month is? Let me look it up real quick. I can, oh, I might have it in my phone if you don't have it. Um, stack and shuffle. Oh, well, heck, see, now this is the second time I've actually <laughs> thought those really go together, and I've yeah. kind of condensed. So I, uh, we might, oh, no, 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 sorry, that's a different, stack and shuffle is when you are cutting, like, the buggy barn patterns, and you, <clears throat> you um, cut a large block, and then you uh, rearrange oh, the yes. layers. Yes. Yeah, that's a little different. Sorry, I had that in my head wrong. So excited. That's a fun one. I have a few samples to share with you, too. So stay tuned and come back and look forward to seeing everybody. Now, this was so much. So we can just go. Do, how do we?